Hello everyone, if you are interested or curious about learning how to fly a fixed wing model airplane, then you should probably watch this video because we're going to be doing a quick review of what is maybe the best beginner airplane. So longtime viewers of the channel may remember Caroline and sometime this year she mentioned she wanted an airplane. So of course, this winter Santa delivered and picked her up the E-Flight UMX Turbo Timber Evolution. Now, Caroline is, I'd say, a beginner to intermediate drone pilot. She can do basic aerobatics, and she has just a little bit of fixed wing experience, but not a lot. She's had a couple flights on the original Hobby Zone Champ that I learned how to fly on, and she did build a foam board airplane, but didn't get a lot of flight time on it. Oh! <laughs> Trying to bring it down. <laughs> so for those of you who only fly drones, which I know is a lot of my audience, I think Caroline is a good point of comparison because most of her experience is with drones. So there are more beginner focused airplanes out there, but I thought the Turbo Timber would be a good choice because it has a much better feature set and is a little bit bigger and heavier than those airplanes. So if Caroline can handle this airplane out of the box, I think she's gonna have a lot more room to grow. So a brief overview of the Turbo Timber. It is a short takeoff and landing Cub with big wheels. It has a 27 inch wingspan, a weight of about five and a half ounces, and it's five channel control. So it has rudder, elevator, aileron, throttle, and flaps. It has a brushless motor, you can put floats on it, and my favorite feature, it has lights. So let's head to the local park and get this thing in the air. We're going to Aspen Airfield. Airfield? Wait. And do what? <clears throat> the crash. So you want to make sure all the controls are going the right way. That's right. Yeah. I think. Okay. And then rudder. Take your rudder. I think that's right. Flaps. What's what? Are this. What is the What do the flaps do? You'll just slow it down. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you ready? So just throw it like straight that way. If you get in trouble, the best thing to do is just cut the throttle and let go of everything. And it'll just be like a glide or a very controlled I'm scared it's going to glide into the trees though. Well, yeah, that it wouldn't be the first time. Yeah. Okay. You're going to steer basically entirely with the right stick. Okay. So bank, yank, towards yourself. Okay. Right, I think I'll do it naturally. Up. We'll see. Yeah. And then, well, the safe is going to limit how much you can turn as well. So, so yeah, you ready? Mm-hmm. I'm going to just throw it. Where should it. I fly? Like in front of us, I don't know. Okay. Try to stay away from the people way over there. Okay. And the trees. Yeah. And like, don't fly behind you. Yeah. Because if you have to spin around, you'll get disoriented. Oh, okay. So I think we're only gonna need like half throttle to take off. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So while Caroline's flying around, let's talk a little bit more about the Turbo Timber and my thoughts on it. So one of the biggest features of the Turbo Timber is it has the AS3X gyro stabilization, which mainly just helps with the wind. And it also has the safe technology, which limits the roll and pitch of the airplane to basically just make it more beginner friendly, a much more docile airplane. Also has auto leveling, so it's basically like angle mode for a drone. So we started out in the safe mode and it definitely made it a lot easier for Caroline to control the airplane. Very good, just turn left.
The only slight issue with safe is because it limits that roll angle of the airplane, it makes it so your turns are always very wide. So there were a few instances where the airplane flew behind us and almost hit a baseball backstop because Caroline was full stick and just couldn't turn any tighter to avoid the obstacles. So just keep that in mind if you buy an airplane with safe, make sure you have more space than you think you need for those wide turns. <laughs> they good. It's okay. All oh, the nose yeah. is a little bent because I flipped it. I think. Oh my gosh! Really? That's alright. It's pretty good landing, I'd say. Yeah, I wasn't too bad. Ready? Another feature of the turbo timber is that it has flaps, which I think is really cool because it gives this airplane a much wider speed range than it would otherwise have without flaps. So for example, we started off with half flaps just to slow the plane down a little bit and give Caroline a little bit more time to respond for her first flight. I think it just adds more depth to the experience, having those flaps to play with, learning how to use flaps on this smaller model, and also just having that ability to fly really slow and even fly indoors is pretty cool. Out, throttle out. We're getting a kind of strong headwind here, so it's going to fly behind you as per usual. Maybe try to keep it on the far half of the field. is just getting beat. Well, if all goes well, the whole plane will be beat. Oh. I'm scared. <laughs> And you should try uh, no flaps this time. See what happens. You're gonna need more speed, but it might not get blown around as much. It'll cut through the air a little better. So I did get to fly the turbo timber. Unfortunately, I don't have footage of it, but the first thing I noticed was how the controls felt. They're actually very relaxed around center stick, and it was just a linear build to full stick in terms of the responsiveness of the airplane. And I think I really agree with the way they tuned the controls on this airplane. I personally am used to a lot twitchier controls around center stick 
on my airplanes, but given that more inexperienced pilots definitely buy this plane, it makes sense to have a more relaxed feel around center stick. That being said, there was still plenty of control authority to do all your normal sport aerobatics. The roll rate was plenty to do rolls. Loops were not a problem. So even out of the box, there's still plenty of control authority with that more relaxed feeling response. Now, after seeing Caroline flying with the safe enabled, making those really wide turns, I was very skeptical of the manual's claim that you could fly this in a large gymnasium. But it does turn out this thing actually corners and handles really well. You can make it turn really tight. Just bank it over and pull full elevator and it will just grip right through that turn without stalling or doing anything weird. So I was actually very impressed with the handling of this airplane. That combined with the flaps, you can really slow this thing down and whip it through corners to fly it in a really tiny space. So overall, I was quite impressed with the way this airplane flies, but there are definitely some cons. The first of which, and maybe the biggest, is that the rudder was not straight from the factory. So I'm more experienced and I had the foresight to adjust the push rod and straighten it out mostly. Even in the air, I had to add extra trim to get the plane flying completely straight. And my fear is that if you were a less experienced pilot, you might not have picked up on that and your plane might have been flying really poorly on the first flight, which is not what you want on your first flight. So okay, I really do that. expect a much more polished setup right out of the box than having a rudder that is not straight. The next con is that the spinner is made out of foam. So on the first landing, which given was not the smoothest landing, the plane did nose over after touching down on the wheels and the spinner did get dented immediately. So I think it would have been a better idea to make the spinner out of a more durable material like plastic. It definitely would be worth the extra half gram to make sure that spinner doesn't immediately get dented. Especially because this being a smaller airplane, even if you had a smoother landing, it's very likely this airplane is just going to nose over after the wheels touch down. The next con is kind of inherent to this airplane and that is just the size of it. It's not that big, so it doesn't give you the momentum of a larger airplane, so you're not gonna get that experience no matter how far you progress with this airplane. You also don't get the experience of managing that momentum and speed for a landing just because this thing will slow down so quickly. And being a smaller airplane, you do need calmer weather to fly it. Now this does fly way better than like the Hobby Zone Champ or the old Park Zone T28 Trojan I had way back in the day. It is significantly larger and heavier, so that helps. The AS3X also is a big help, but that doesn't change the fact that this airplane is just going to drift downwind on you so that is a bit of a con. Oh, sorry. I tried to turn the box on. <laughs> <laughs> Big crash. All right, well, we should probably change the battery. Okay. What are your thoughts? It's fun. It's it's hard. I'm not used to it. <laughs> it's not the champ. Alright, we're trying it. No with safe no mode. safe. No safe. Unsafe. No safe. Ready? Yeah. If you get in trouble, you can always flick that switch, but you look good. You flipped the switch? I did, yeah. You just need a little more throttle there, I think. Here you try again. Yep, give it throttle. Now the next con may be a deal breaker for some people. This airplane is part of the Horizon Hobby ecosystem, so that means it is spectrum only. There's no way for you to add in your own receiver which you know is kind of forgivable because it's so small and the receiver is like integrated with the rest of the electronics, but it's still a bit of a bummer, especially if you're coming from the drone community where basically no one uses Spectrum. 
you're either going to have to buy the ready-to-fly version, which is going to have a crappier spectrum transmitter, or you're going to have to buy a separate spectrum transmitter and they are not cheap, or you're going to have to use a spectrum module on your existing transmitter that can transmit the DSMX protocol. All right, you can land it. Oh, cartwheel. The, it did not want to go anymore. Oh, okay, it's probably very dead. Without the safe, it was hard. It was really hard. Like it kept, kept going like this, and then <laughs> like. <laughs> I don't know what's happened here. What? Does that aileron look weird? Oh, this one? Oh, is it in safe mode? Yeah. I just flip it over and it should... Okay. I thought it was broken because oh. it was trying to auto level still. It looks good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, it kept going like this in non-safe mode. Yeah. Right? It also had some some down trim, but it's definitely one of the parts of flying an airplane is knowing when to push it forward and level it out before it stalls. All right, so how would you rate your first flights with this? It was good. I think, well, I feel like the safe, the safe mode helped, like, but it would definitely be better to just try to learn how to fly it, you know, manually because yeah, well, I, th I think it's nice to have that panic switch. Yeah. Where it'll mostly level you out. Oh, God. Okay. So that's it for the flying in this video. Now let's answer the question of, is this a good first airplane? And I think the answer to that is definitely yes, but with a caveat. So this airplane is not the most beginner focused and easiest airplane to fly on the market. However, because it has the safe technology, I think it's reasonable to be able to make that jump immediately to this airplane, at which point you can grow a lot more with this airplane than other more beginner focused airplanes. It has flaps, it is sport airbags capable, so you can go all the way from just learning the controls to learning how to do aerobatics, which is a pretty advanced level. So my recommendation would be to just make sure you're comfortable with the controls of an airplane on a simulator before jumping straight to this airplane. That way you have enough familiarity with the controls to prevent yourself from crashing into things and then the safe technology will pretty much keep you from doing anything else that's egregiously stupid. So that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it or even learned something from it. If you did, please give the video a like and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss future videos. And please let me know in the comments if you liked this fixed swing content. I can certainly make more of it. If you didn't, don't worry, we'll be back to the regularly scheduled drone content in the next video. Thanks for watching.